Good evening, folks, and welcome to the horror. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Hirsch, and this week we're doing another movie review. This is Godzilla Minus One. Released in 2023, produced by Toho Studios. Uh, and this film definitely does feel like it's Toho kind of reclaiming their creation. <laughs> Godzilla, bringing Godzilla back and... Uh, showing the American audiences how it's done, you know. <laughs> and I think they do exactly that here. Everything you've heard about this film is absolutely 100% correct. Um, because this film is phenomenal. Um, and yeah, it's just a triumph. It's just a fantastic film overall. Not even just a great monster movie or a great horror movie. It's just a great movie, period, you know. It works on every level. I feel like they've crafted the perfect Godzilla film. I will say that right now. I think it is the best Godzilla film ever made, in my opinion, of course. <laughs> uh, and I am a fan of Godzilla. I've watched Godzilla movies ever since I was a little kid, you know. Even <laughs> even the old uh, cheesy 70s ones where you got the big bug eyes, you know, and doing drop kicks on King Kong. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, taking on Hedora and uh, King Ghidorah and uh, Mothra and all that crazy stuff. You know, I love that stuff. I still love those movies. Um, but yeah, it all goes back to that original classic, that masterpiece from 1954. And this film definitely takes a lot of influence from the original classic. Um, but yeah, it it's almost is kind of like the best of the history of Godzilla. There's uh, elements of so many different incarnations of the character over the years. Uh, even including the American, uh, there's influence from the American films from Legendary even, especially when you see the scenes of Godzilla kind of swimming around the ocean, you know. <laughs> Uh, that's definitely reminiscent to the legendary uh, movies. Uh, and also when he charges up and gets ready to blast his atomic breath. Very similar to the legendary films. Uh, but I'd say the film it's most like is the original classic. Because we're dealing with the post-war after uh, World War II. And uh, we meet this young kamikaze pilot. And, you know, just as things are winding down with the war, uh, you know, he decides to land his plane instead of going <laughs> and dying, you know, as he's destined to do. <laughs> but, you know, he decides he has a different path. He does not want to do that. Uh, so he lands the plane and, you know, blames it on, you know, faulty engine, you know. <laughs> uh, and he decides he wants to live. Uh, and he's all torn up about that because, you know, it's honor, you know, that's one thing about Japanese culture. Honor is is known as being such a big thing and he's very torn up about it. And not only that, is he's dealing with extreme PTSD, you know. Um, he's having horrible flashbacks and nightmares and, you know, and it's very interesting, you know, in the in the context of this monster movie we're getting these very human characters and uh that's though is the big complaint that people have when it comes to the godzilla franchises you never give a damn about the human characters all you just get to the monster action get to the carnage and destruction and mayhem that's all we want to see we want to see monsters fighting each other knocking over buildings you know and uh we don't give a damn about the characters, but big difference here is that we do care about the characters. They craft a great story here um, about the after effects of the war, you know. Uh, he goes back to his hometown and there's just nothing but rubble and destruction everywhere caused from the war. And, you know, his parents have been killed. Everybody knows is dead, you know. 
uh, except for like one of his friends, you know. And uh, he ends up he ends up beating uh, this young woman, kind of bumping into it, and uh, and uh, she's got a baby, so he tries to help her, and and the woman hands him the baby, and he's like, "What the hell? <laughs> what am I gonna do?" And he sets the baby down, and, and he's ready to leave, but he's like, no, I can't leave this poor baby here and this craziness that's going on. Um, so he picks up the baby, and the woman comes back for it, and they end up kind of, you know, building a friendship and building a foundation for a life together. They decide they want to they wanna both raise this child, even though... The child does not even belong to the woman. She was uh, a woman who was getting killed, you know, gave up the baby to her. So, uh, you know, these people are just kind enough and good enough to take care of this baby and raise them themselves. And they kind of build. And uh, the city is trying to rebuild after the war, you know. And they're, they're rebuilding their community. And he goes out and gets a regular job, you know. Uh, working on the ship, um, yeah, and then of course we uh, end up meeting Godzilla for the first time, and I was a little bit, I have to say I was a little bit disappointed when you first see Godzilla, and like, he's not that big, you know, he's almost like, he's only like a little bit bigger than say, the T-Rex in Jurassic Park, I'm like, Oh, well, he looks cool, but I thought he'd be bigger, you know. And then, of course, the next time you see him, he's absolutely gargantuan. <laughs> um, but, yeah, when it comes to Godzilla in this film, it's the Godzilla that I like best when he is the threat, when he is the force of mass destruction, you know. When he's not out there saving the planet and teaming up with King Kong like he does in this new one coming out. <laughs> uh, and fighting all the monsters no this time he is the monster he is the main threat and uh he's absolutely devastating in this movie you know <laughs> uh he is just evil relentless and uh destructive force of nature uh and you know what happened was you know we woke the monster from the deep, from the bottom of the ocean. We woke him from his slumber with our war and our destruction, our atomic bombs, you know. And that's kind of, you know, how Godzilla came to be, you know. Uh, and he's pissed off about it. You woke him from his sleep and he's going to make you pay. And boy, does he ever. <laughs> um, so when it comes to the look of Godzilla, it's definitely playing off several different versions of uh, I'd say all the best versions of the character together, including, you know, the American version. There's a little bit of that in there, too, you know. Uh, especially when he uses his atomic breath, when he charges up and, you know, <laughs> lets it loose is, uh, is similar to the American version. Uh, especially when you see uh, Godzilla swimming around in the ocean, you know. <laughs> Uh, some of those scenes remind me of, of the legendary pictures uh, in America. Uh, so yeah, it's just like the best of all eras of Godzilla. You even see a little bit of Godzilla 2000 in there, even like <laughs> some of the Shin Godzilla in there, you know. Uh, and I just think it's the best looking Godzilla I've ever seen. Uh, and what's amazing is, I know you've all probably heard this, is the film only cost $15 million to make, you know. And when you compare that to these American films that spend $150, $200 million and they look like crap, you know, like something like, say, The Flash or, you know, or this new Aquaman coming out is like 100% CGI. It looks like a mess, you know. He got this film that looks fantastic, you know. <laughs> like, like, what's going on here, you know? How can they take $15 million and make an absolutely incredible looking movie? And a lot of that has to do with the direction, too. The, the direction of this movie is fabulous. It looks pristine. Uh, there's so many great shots that you know you're going to see in some of the highlights when you look at the hit, back at the history of Godzilla. There's going to be a lot of shots used from this film.
Uh, I can name a few in particular, like uh, there's one shot where uh, this whole lineup of tanks blasts Godzilla with the cannons, and there's this huge cloud of smoke, you know? And when the smoke clears, uh, you slowly see uh, Godzilla's face materialize, and you see that it did absolutely nothing <laughs> that had no effect on him whatsoever. And he's like, oh. he's like, oh, shoot, look out. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and yeah, there's that great scene that they take kind of from the original film where Godzilla, you know, picks up the train and bites it in half, like in the original film. Uh, that was such a cool uh, nod to the original classic. Um, and there's another great scene where you see kind of like Godzilla, like, from the ground level, and it just gives you... A uh, great scope of just how humongous he is, and you're looking up at him, and he like roars into the air. <laughs> you know, it's like awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's everything you want in a Godzilla movie. Incredible action. There's another great shot where um, Godzilla is chasing the boat, and you kind of see him swimming in his big fins up in the air and you and you see his face above the water too and you can see his eyes you see the the expression in Godzilla's face which I've never really noticed too much of before you see his eyes clearly and he's just you know evil you know he looks evil <laughs> I love it absolutely love it um, yeah incredible special effects of man uh, and I know they worked on this movie for a long time, so they slowly crafted this great story with great acting, too. It's very emotional, you know, we get to know these characters along the way. The character development is fantastic. Great performances. You're just 100% invested in this film. And then when the destruction comes, it's earned, you know. Uh... And it makes it all the more powerful when it does happen. It's just like devastating. You're like, oh no, you know. <laughs> you don't want to see these people get hurt. You don't want to see them get just stomped on by Godzilla. This isn't, this isn't like seeing some slasher movie where you want them to die right away. You know, just just get rid of them. <laughs> just take them out, you know. Uh, none of that here. You are on their side. And... Uh, 100% you want them to conquer this monster you want them to end this threat you know they've already been through this horrible World War two and now they've got this whole new threat they got coming on it's like the war and it never ended you know now we got a whole new war to fight against this gargantuan kaiju monster <laughs> you know uh, it's like God never ends <laughs> uh, but yes, they fight back, you know, they get together, the townspeople get together, you know, in, in uh, Tokyo. Uh, some of the ex-military and some of these scientists uh, and these soldiers from the army get together. And uh, they craft a very intelligent, thought-out plan of how they're going to take Godzilla out. And it's very interesting, you know, the tactics they use and, and they show, <laughs> they lay it all out. And you're like, yeah, that could work, you know, the way they set it up. And it's like, great, you see them fighting back, taking back their land, you know, and it's really cool. And, and you're not rooting for the monster to just destroy him, you know. Uh, you want to see them succeed, uh, but man, it's so powerful, and uh, I'm not going to give anything away about how the end, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's just a fantastic movie. I absolutely love it, and like I said, I think it's the best Godzilla movie ever made. I was blown away. Uh, I cannot say enough good things about it. I give two devil horns way up. And uh, thank you guys for joining me, Sean Patrick Urshan in the Horror Corner. Tune in and stay scared. <laughs>
the Horror Hangout live stream t-shirt and represent the legacy of the Horror Hangout. Check out the link in the description below of this video.